Savior's cross has set this sinner free. Hope has a name. His name is Jesus. Oh Christ, be praised. I have victory. There is a light. Salvation's flame, Christ undefeated, trampled the grave. I see now the cross be lifted high. The light has come, the light is one. Behold the Christ. There'll be a day, my hope complete, now home in glory, your face I'll see, my pain no more, my fears will cease, I bow my life, I fix my eyes on Christ my King. I bow my life, I fix my eyes on Christ my King Oh, has a name, His name is Jesus, my Savior Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for all that you've done for us to make a way. For there was no way that we get to have this relationship with you, Lord. Um, not like any other, Father, but uh, uniquely ours, Lord, that you see us as individuals and you died for us all for one, but also as individuals, Lord. So we thank you so much for all that you've done for us. Um, for enduring the cross, for paying the price, Lord, um, that it was going to cost uh, for that veil to be torn, for the law to be fulfilled, for death to be defeated. Um, praise you, God. Praise you. We love you so much. We just ask that you bless and anoint our time uh, together right now, God, and um, just speak to us, Lord. Um, speak to our hearts. Uh, focus our attention, God, and, and just be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hello. Uh, I guess he's back. Um, it's been a while. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit different. The back backdrop, got my guitars, <laughs> finally. Um, yeah, we uh, came back from Tennessee. We're back in Arizona. Uh, very happy to be home. Um, and see the sun shining outside and the warm weather it's a it's a beautiful thing we're very grateful to the lord for bringing us back just like we were grateful for him uh giving us time um, to be in tennessee um 
during a really rough season. Um, we're still coming out of it, but um, things are looking good. God is so faithful. He is so good to us. Um, even when it feels like whatever you're going through is never going to end, I promise you, um, just like I'm speaking to myself, it's only for a season. God is a, uh, he's a God of seasons. He he uh, lets us go through things, but it's temporary. The afflictions that we face are temporary. Um, uh, David said he would have lost heart if he wouldn't have um, uh, seen good, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So uh, that is something to to hold on to when you're going through difficult times. It's not just it's not just about um, the blessed hope we have in Christ that we're going to be with Him for eternity, which is ultimately all we need. But still, just knowing that God still wants good things for us even while we're here on this earth. Um, to be a light in the darkness and to, uh, uh, to be used by Him and to reflect His love, His goodness to others and, um, and have a testimony. And so if we haven't been through anything hard, if we haven't been through hardships, if our faith hasn't been tested, um, then the things that we say don't really mean much. Um, but it, it's after that we've gone through really, really difficult things and our uh, faith has been tested on the battleground um, by the enemy, by the world, by our flesh, by our circumstances, um, all allowed by the Lord um, that we come out and, and our words actually mean something. So I uh, <clears throat> just want that to be an encouragement to anybody today that is uh, facing something um, that is impossible without God to get through. You will get through it with the Lord. Uh, he loves you. And um, just to like he loves us. He's brought us this far. He's not going to stop now. So amen. Uh, today's, um, today's teaching uh, is called Jesus is in the boat. And um, before I get to the main um, passage that I want to read in Luke chapter 8, um, there was a really cool, just tiny little, short little verse um, uh, that really has stuck. And uh, I don't know why, maybe everybody else has it memorized but me, but um, uh, it's not one that I hear very often. You know, we, we kind of tend to hear a lot of the same scriptures um, from the church body, from uh, friends and family who are believers. Um, that That's all good. Um, but every now and then there's these uh, really amazing scriptures that kind of slip through the cracks that aren't just uh, that instant, instant, you know, instantly recognizable. <laughs> so uh, this is Psalm uh, 56 verse 3. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, that's a uh, it's very simple and to the point. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. So uh, I'm going to try to try to say that more and meditate on that um, when I am afraid because uh, we all get afraid. We all go through moments and times that are tough when, uh, when we're afraid. And uh, God knows that and thank him for his word and, and for that relationship we have with him that um, and for that verse. It's so simple and, and easy to understand. That we go to God. We go to God when we're afraid, and um, promise He'll take He'll take care of you. Doesn't mean He's gonna make it all better right away, or He's gonna take away the hurt or the pain. But uh, but He is with us, and uh, He is um, trustworthy. He is faithful and dependable. Um. So the the big the big uh, event in Scripture that I want to um, read today is. Um, in Luke chapter 8, uh, verses 22 through 25. <clears throat> and again, I'm reading in the King James Version. Um, here we go. Verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. That's Jesus. He. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came, came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased. And there was a calm. 
And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water, and they obey him. Wow. It's a very familiar passage for many of us. Uh, we've heard that we've heard that story a million times. Um, again, it's not just a, a made-up legend or myth. This is a historical uh, narrative. So it, it actually happened uh, exactly how it says it happened. Um, and and I kind of got this confused sometimes, like. With, with another similar story where Jesus actually walks on the water, but it was a totally different event. And um, this one is only found in Luke, um, not in the other Gospels. Um, so, uh, But I'm really glad as we get into it um, to show you why I'm glad it's there and, and what encouragement uh, we can grab from this and how we can apply it to, uh, to whatever season we're in. So... Again, the teaching is called Jesus is in the boat. So have you ever been in a situation or circumstance where you felt all alone, where you felt left completely alone by God, even after he promised you, he's promised us, we know this, I'll never leave or forsake you. But there are those moments, if we're being honest with each other, where it feels like he actually has left. Um, you said you would never leave or forsake me, but I don't see you, I don't feel you, I don't hear you. You're nowhere to be found. It's just that silence sometimes that we get from the Lord. And not only that, but then it seems like sometimes at after that point, like things start spinning even more and more out of control. Just when you thought it couldn't get worse, and it just gets worse and worse. And it's like, okay, Lord, like I, I was barely making it before when you were silent. And circumstances were bad and now it it's escalating things are getting even worse well um, this was the case with the disciples at the time they were Jesus said let's get to the other side of this lake they hop in the boat and and they're at Jesus falls asleep and here comes a storm. Now, if we look carefully at what Jesus had said before they got in the boat, what did he say? There's there's a hidden promise in the words that he says. If we examine it carefully, he said, let us go over to the other side of the lake. What does that mean? The way that I see it, if Jesus says, let's go to the other side, we're getting to the other side. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If Jesus said, hey, let's go to the store, you know you're going to be going to the store. So just like this, they said, let's get to the other side of the lake. They, it, there's a, it's a promise. It, it, you are going to get to the other side, okay? Um, but so many times, something that we hear from the Lord or something that we know where he's leading us, it, we know it at first when we begin our journey, and, and then somewhere, somewhere in the middle of it, um, we lose sight of the truth when fear wells up and, and circumstances happen when that storm arises and it knocks us on our butts it flattens our faith it it uh it really really tests us and and we typically fail in that moment just like the disciples did here and uh so so when Jesus said let's go to the other side he knew he already knew exactly what was going to happen he knew there was going to be a storm. He wasn't worried about it. He was going to sleep, but he's he's all knowing. He knows everything that's ever going to happen. There are no curveballs for God. And listen to me, like whatever is happening in your life too. God is not surprised by any of it. Nothing is out of control ever ever with the Lord at the helm. All right, nothing is ever out of control. It might seem like it's out of control to us. It might seem like everything is in this like state of chaos and just spinning and everything's a whirlwind and there's a storm, but the truth is God is in complete control. He is in complete control and we can 
I mean, honestly, we should be sleeping right there next to Jesus, <laughs> you know, um, relaxing and saying, okay, like, whatever happens, um, you know, you got this, Lord. So, after he fell asleep, the mighty storm came out of nowhere. Now, let's talk about this storm, too, because who was in the boat? A bunch of disciples. Well, who were the disciples? Actually, many of them were professional fishermen that did that for a living before Jesus said, let me make you fishers of men, if, if you recall. Um, at least four of them, for sure, that we know were, were fishermen. Um, so they were very familiar. They were familiar with the waters. They were familiar with being out on the lake. Probably an, They'd probably seen it all at that point. Even being young, I'm sure they had seen it all. They had seen every type of storm. They had been through all kinds of stuff. Uh, and so what does that say? For a storm to come that shook them up this badly must have meant it was some something else. It was um, more significant than the word really, uh, you know, hints at. You know, it just kind of tells you the facts sometimes. It doesn't read... Be- you, you got to kind of read between the lines sometimes, but but to realize that these disciples were so afraid, so shaken up, um, it must have been it must have been something else. So uh, uh, let's just keep that in mind as well. So this storm c- came. What happened? What? How did they react? Um, well, how do we all react when we get? A storm that just hits us out of nowhere everything's going along smooth and bam we just get you know we get blindsided by some circumstance that we didn't see coming that honestly was like maybe our greatest fear or uh, that was just some something that was gonna really really put our faith to the test if we're being honest we freak out so what did they do they freaked out they panicked. They were filled with fear and anxiety. And uh, can I just say how grateful again I am for this being recorded in Scripture because, uh, I don't know, call me selfish, <laughs> but if, if everybody in the Bible, every man and woman that faced temptations and trials and afflictions just, you know, they just soared right above soared right above it and just succeeded and they never failed like I would be so discouraged but to see these were men that that loved Jesus they'd seen so many miracles they walked with him there's no telling all the things that they had actually seen um, even before this and and they still they messed up they did the wrong thing well praise God because what do we do we mess up all the time even after we've seen God faithful we look back and we can see all these things in our lives where God got us through things Um, because we don't just go through one thing we go through multiple things um, through life and God is always faithful and they're always temporary so um, and if it's not temporary um, then he gives us the grace to be able to accept whatever it is we're going through uh it might still be super hard but he gives us a way um to trust him with that and to to make amends and and to accept it i guess acceptance is the word i'm looking for uh for people that you know maybe maybe suffer from physical things that um that they know they're gonna kind of have to deal with their whole lives but um but even then, there's so many amazing, amazing men and women of God that have um, been able to take those circumstances. Um, I know people personally that are heroes, truly heroes. Um, uh, and and it's no wonder oftentimes they're the ones that are the most happy, you know, and full of joy <laughs> more than other brothers and sisters I know um, are usually the ones that have suffered the most. Um, or are suffering and so uh, there's something to that it's kind of like you know I kind of believe like your good is only going to be as good as the bad was bad if that makes sense I I hope that makes sense it's kind of like 
the more you've gone through, the higher ceiling you have uh, for things to get better and, and, and to be more grateful for, for things that, that normally, you know, you wouldn't be grateful for. Like, um, you know, you, you say you sprain a wrist or you, you, you break an arm or something and it's like all of a sudden you realize, right, like, oh my goodness, I've taken that for granted every day of my life <laughs> um, until now and um, and then it heals and then yeah again we start taking it for granted again so um, there's just something about gratitude and, and being thankful to the Lord for for everything but there's no way there's no way to not take things for granted um, um, but we can be intentional and, and do our best to, to focus on on the Lord and all he's given us um, again focus on not the bad focus on the good on, on what you do have um, and that can get us through some some pretty dark times alone by just um, being thankful uh, to the Lord um, so anyway so after the disciples here uh, after they freak out um, they they did something right and they did something wrong so um, what did they do right well they went and woke Jesus up. So, and and if they were freaking out, it, that tells me that that wasn't the very first thing that they did was, okay, the second they saw the storm, it was like, okay, let's go. Go wake Jesus up, right? No, I think they did what a lot of us, again, tend to do. We try to, we try to weather the storm. We try to... Um, we try to hang in there uh, in our own strength. Maybe, maybe they just tried to wait to see if it would pass. Like, um, and it seems like that's kind of like, hey, just man up, just be tough, just get through it. You don't need help. Just, um, y- you know, just hang on. Um, and and maybe I'm making assumptions here, but but I don't think so, um, because um, because of what they actually did wrong. Well, what did they do wrong? Um, what they did right was they went and woke Jesus up. Master, master, um, get up, wake up, Jesus. Okay, what did they do wrong? The next words that came out of their mouth, what was it? We perish. <laughs> um, that's what they did wrong. So so I think if there was enough time for that storm to come and for them to all of a sudden be like, we're going to die. We're going to die if we don't wake Jesus up. Well, is that is is that when we should go to the Lord is when like all else has failed and we feel like we're gonna perish then we go to the Lord no I think I think the lesson is is we need to get into a habit of going uh, of the Lord being our first call Um, I mean like Lord it's starting to get rough I'm gonna go to you first right like I, I need help, Lord. Help me now. Help me now before it gets bad. Maybe it's still going to continue to be bad, but at least we go to the Lord first. He should be our first call um, uh, instead of trying to rely on, you know, on our flesh and our own strength. Um, God's strength is made perfect in our weakness, and it's kind of like sometimes the sooner... Um, the sooner we give up and we give in and we surrender it to the Lord and, and go to Him, instead of asking everybody around us for help, we go to doctors, we go to um, we go to friends, we go to counselors, we go uh, to any kind of advisors um, uh, for help. You know, um, and again, it's not that that's wrong to do to go and seek help from other people because. God does put people in our lives to help us in very specific things. But <clears throat> did you pray first? Did you did you ask the Lord for healing first? Uh, again, it's up to him whether he heals us or not immediately or whatever, but the the cool thing is is the sooner you get the Lord involved in your situation, then he's going <clears throat> Sorry, I got something in my throat. <clears> throat> He is going to guide <clears throat> and direct you the whole rest of the time. And you know that. And so so then every decision that you make after that is based on, okay, you know, Lord, what should I do? Um, 
you can fast you can you can bring things to him you can ask him okay what do i do do i go with this person or this person or or maybe god just miraculously just takes care of it you know he he does that too so um uh he can do it all but the sooner we we take it out of our own hands and put it in the lord's hands uh the better so uh i hope that's i hope that's uh encouraging to you and uh <clears throat> I'm really guilty of that. Um, so, uh, again, I'm always I'm always more speaking to myself to, than to anybody else. Um, but uh, so they said we perish, and Jesus, in His love, um, what did He do? <clears throat> he. It said before He said a word, He arose. Um, then he arose and and i believe that's the same word um that that is um that is used for when he ro arose from the dead as well which is um which is really cool anytime anytime our lord jesus arises and stands up it's just like <laughs> oh man like it's like almost like i just can imagine the the whole world just trembling like what's he about to do you know and and in this in this case, Jesus arises out of his out of his sleep, completely calm, completely cool, completely collected, knows exactly what's going on, um, not a morsel of fear in the Lord. And and what does he do? He he rebukes the wind, which what it like? I don't know about you, but like I'm like. What does it look like when Jesus rebukes wind and the raging water? Like, did he speak to it? Like, I guess we can assume that he spoke to it. Or did he just go, you've been a naughty, <laughs> you've been a naughty water. You've been a naughty wind. And they, they straighten up. Uh, I don't know. That's just a little bit of comedy there. I don't, maybe I'm the only one laughing, but, uh, did he do it did he do it in anger did he yell at it um did he just speak it softly i don't know um it would be cool to see but no matter what um the point is that the wind and the water and the storm it didn't have a choice it was facing the creator and whatever the creator says goes and uh it didn't matter so it immediately, <clears throat> it immediately that says there was a calm, and uh, and I just love that. It's when Jesus arises and when he does what he's going to do. Eventually, we're going to land to this point where there's a calm, the fear dies down. We're able to just reflect and see, Wow, Lord, look at what you did, and and never think that it's not God, even even if. God used someone else to help you in your situation or whatever it was. Anything good that ever happens comes from God. And so give him the glory. Um, so then so then he says, <clears throat> where is your faith? Um, I, I, I kind of feel like Jesus probably says that to me on the on the daily, you know, like where is your faith if what what would my life be like if if i had if i had real faith and like i was always um putting it to work and i just trusted him um i don't know it'd be amazing but at the same time <clears throat> that's something i'm working on that's something that uh that I'm, I'm trying to get better at is is leaning on that faith it's trusting the lord it's it's um again uh, psalm 56 3 whenever i am afraid i will trust in you so just going to him and 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 hopefully that gets you to that calm place a lot quicker um there's a scripture i, I can't remember exactly where it is it says um um he keeps him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Um, or you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Um, talking about the Lord. And so, again, it's just 
if our if our eyes are on Jesus, um, if they would have if they would have just right away woke Jesus up, you know, instead of waited till things got went from bad to worse with that storm, they would have never reached that level where they were so afraid that they were um, gonna die, um, and and where they had that doubt. So uh, <clears throat> so again, you know, it's you know it's it's not a lack of faith to wake Jesus up it is not <laughs> I'm gonna say it one more time it is not a lack of faith to go to Jesus because honestly he's he's never sleeping you know he knew what was going on he was sleeping but for us he's never sleeping um, and 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 this leads us right back to the title whatever you're going through as, as bad, as dire, as scary as it gets. Jesus is in the boat. So rest assured, you are going to get to the other side. You are going to get through whatever it is you're going through. Me and Jenna right now, we are, we are going to get through it. Jesus is with us. He is in the boat. And as long as we are going to him and we put our trust in him, he is going to make sure that he's going to see this through. He's going to be re bring restoration. He's going to bring us out of the season that we're in and into something better. And, um, and that's just the way that he works. So praise God that he is so faithful and dependable. And, uh, and again, um, I just, just, to be a little bit more specific and to be any even more encouraging than I can be, you know, the truth is Jesus is, he's not just in the boat. Um, God has made a way the Holy Spirit is inside of us. So it, he's not even in a boat with us. He's with us wherever we go. He lives inside of us. The Holy Spirit is in everyone that believes. And um, just to um, just to further um, hammer that home, I, I've got a couple scriptures. Um, so talking about when we get when we get sealed by the Holy Spirit and when He comes to live inside of us. So the first is um, found in John chapter seven, um, verses thirty-eight and thirty-nine. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And then in parentheses, But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Um, so at that time, he was, he was, he was speaking ahead of, ahead of when the Holy Spirit was going to come and, and make his home with us. So... We, the Holy Spirit absolutely existed um, before Jesus said this. He was always active. Um, even in Genesis 1, the Spirit of God, you know, the Holy Spirit was hovering over the face of the deep. It's, it's incredible. And um, the, whole, the person, the person of the Holy Spirit, not some, don't think of some ghost, you know, even though he is the Holy Ghost, but he is a person and he has a personality and he has um, characteristics. Um, the word calls him the great comforter. Um, that's this is a whole other uh, sermon in itself. But um, don't sleep on the Holy Spirit. So many times we give we give so much attention to Jesus and to God the Father, and we kind of leave the Holy Spirit out of it sometimes. And um, it's important to uh, to know um, the ministry of each and and how. Each part is God, you know, the trilogy, or the trilogy, <laughs> the Trinity. It's it's important doctrine um, um, that not not just for doctrinal sake, but for as we think and meditate and think on God and have a relationship with Him, um, we want to have a relationship with Jesus, with the Father, but also with the Holy Spirit. So um, I think that just kind of is just being aware, like. God is in us. The Holy Spirit is with us. And, and Jesus said amazing things about the Holy Spirit. Um, let's read another. Um, John chapter 20, verse 23. Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. 
And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Um, I think that's really cool. Um, again, that's evidence that uh, that is not speaking of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Acts 2 um, is not, um, it, it's something else. It, it is not the Holy Spirit coming to live inside of us. So it's important to know, and, and we can get into that another time, but just know the baptism of the Holy Spirit is different than the Holy Spirit sealing us and coming to live inside of us. Um, so just wanted to say that as well really quickly. And, um, and then lastly, just one last scripture. Actually, I have two more. <laughs> I have so many. Uh, John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, with the capital C, by the way, uh, speaking of the Holy Spirit, um, proving that he is God, that he may abide with you forever. John fourteen twenty six. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit always just furthers or, or just he, he brings to remembrance what Jesus has taught us. So, um, so it would never, never be uh, in contradiction of anything Jesus ever taught or said in the Bible. It just basically takes it further um, um, because, you know, Jesus ended up you know, going away, but he left. He said, it's good that I go away because then he sent the Holy Spirit. So, um, so anyway, uh, uh, last, last scripture, John 16, seven, uh, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Um, on that note, just remember, Jesus is in the boat. The Holy Spirit, even better, is lives inside of us and, and is here for us. And, and uh, he's walking everything. Um, he's walking it through with us. And uh, he is aware. He is in perfect control. And he knows what he's doing. Um, just trust him. Just trust him. Um, thanks so much. Uh, have a great rest of the day. I'll uh, hopefully see you guys soon. Love y'all. Bye.